from the printing press to the furnace. Here's a quick history of book burnings. We'll start with one of the first ones and probably one of the most thematically relevant ones. It happens in the Qin Dynasty where not only were the books burned, but the live burial of 460 Confucian scholars was also ordered. Now I find that especially interesting because when you burn a book, the question is always, are you just destroying the work or are you also destroying the culture from whence it comes? And I think in this case, both are true. Now, moving on, another example in which not only is the book for the person uh, also banished and destroyed, Ovid was banished from Rome and later his works were burned um, because they were found too controversial, too problematic. So the question that this video engages is when you burn a book, do you also destroy the person? Do you also destroy more than just the ideology? Let's go to the medieval period, uh, known uh, very popularly because of typhoid and smallpox and dysentery, but also for book burning and witch hunts. Now, one of the more interesting ones is the burning of the library at Alexandria, over 200,000 volumes that were, quote, deemed useless and need not be preserved. This is not one of the, this is not the only example through a history where things that are destroyed are destroyed because they don't seem to have value. And that's because when one culture destroys something of another, it's often because to that culture, that other thing doesn't have value. Now, here's another example, but this example is more about uh, preservation of authenticity and controlling meaning. So this is um, in 650, and here you have an example of someone who writes, he's in, in line after Muhammad and he writes, uh, he rewrites the Quran and then orders the burning of every other copy so that his own copy is the one that is, that is true. And this is especially uh, interesting, right? Because it brings into question the, the conversation of meaning and who controls meaning. You know, and this is the most overt way of controlling meaning. Here's another example of books that were burned because they were deemed too pagan or decadent. And this is very common not only of this era, but also of the idea of book burning altogether, where we destroy things that we think offend us. Take another example here. This one is about 1499 or 1500s. You have 5,000 manuscripts that were burned during this period altogether. Um, Hebrew texts, Arabic books, and this the, the, the burning of Hebrew texts or Jewish-related material is something that carries out throughout history. One of the most notable examples that we'll cover later is uh, during the Nazi regime. Now, here's another example, and this is in England primarily with the schism between the Catholics and the Protestants. Uh, the Tudors and the Stuart periods, they, they burned and they destroyed so many uh, texts during the time period because of uh, warring, in warring religious conflict. Uh, here's another example in 1525, and this is an example of books, Bibles that were burned, right? Material that was burned because they only wanted the Bible to be available in Latin, uh, which nobody spoke and nobody ever does, but except the people who are trained to read, right? And that's another way of controlling information, controlling meaning. So Bibles were also burned. Uh, still are burned. Now, this is in, 15, um, in the 1500s still. For hundreds of years, the Roman Catholic Church has listed a list of, uh, a listed uh, collection of books that are prohibited, right? In the index, this is the Liberum Prohibitorium, which sounds like an awesome 80s band, rock band, but it's not. Instead, these are books that have been uh, deemed undesirable for Catholics, right? Books where uh, that you're not supposed to read. And many books that we teach uh, today in schools feature in this list. This list, by the way, was disbanded in the 20th century. Here are other examples, uh, and it's still in the 1500s, it's a very popular time period for burning books. So here, the Spanish conquistadors, they burned books that were written by indigenous American civilizations. Another example yet of how we destroy that which we don't fully understand. And because we don't understand it, we can't appreciate it. 
Here is a, another example. The German translation of the Bible was burnt in Germany, ordered by the Pope. And this is after the, 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 the schism primarily between the Catholics and the Protestants, led by Martin, people like Martin Luther and John Calvin. Uh, in 1733, this one is interesting because it's self-imposed. Uh, so this guy writes his first play, and then he burned it uh, when people told him that it sucked, <laughs> which I think is incredible. I think it's something that a lot of people should take into consideration. Um, so moving on, here are some examples in the 19th century of book burnings where in this, in this example, a Hasidic rabbi reportedly uh, write, writes a book in which he himself uh, which he himself burned in 1808 and this he cites as a great mistake right or, or something that he regrets now <clears throat> in 1814 you have 3,000 books that were used by the British forces to burn down the US Capitol so while this case is not about burning information for the sake of destroying knowledge but rather uh, because you need to light a fire but in either case, books always seem to take the, the, the grunt of the work. Here in 1852, he burns his second half of his book because he was persuaded that his work was sinful. This is something he later regrets and he thinks was a mistake. Uh, moving on to 1873 and 74, you've got the suppression of information. You have burning a hundred and uh, 134,000 pounds of books that were denounced as obscene or harmful, right? And these books here, this is the New York Society uh, of Source Suppression of, of Vice. Uh, these books that were burned were burned primarily because of offense. And that's the point that I want to I want to iterate. You you have to understand that when you when you destroy books you do it not because of the book necessarily, you do it because it offends you, because I don't want it, and therefore I destroy it. Now, moving on, let's go to the, let's go to the First and Second World War, where not only was the Irish National Archives bombed, and so much of their information was obliterated, but the fire bombings also destroyed one third of all German books, uh, a place where they also burned other books, and we'll get to in a second. Uh, examples in 1946 of the Iranian forces that defeated the Kurdish government. After defeating them, not only did they burn the books in that language, but they also banned learning the language, and they also closed the printing press. Now, that is how you successfully eradicate an entire culture and eradicate a meaning, a language, information, right? And so that you don't, under you don't take this book burning only as led by institutions or radicals. Here are examples where priests and teachers and parents were publicly involved in also burning books. I need you to understand that this isn't a thing that just governments do. Uh, people do it. People within those governments. Parents do it. Uh, teachers do it. Now, another example here is the Nazi example. This is the one most people know. These are the books that were considered un-German, right? And the goal was to purify literature of foreign, especially Jewish and moral influences. So these students were reportedly burning books for the time period of six months in different universities. But the most popular one is the one right outside the one of the universities, which we'll get into. But one of, what I find most interesting is uh, one of the quotes that was reportedly said at the time, which is, we don't need any more information. All the information we need, we already have. Take, for instance, here are some of the guidelines established to burn a book, right? And I like how organized they were. If it was written by a traitor, if it offended, denigrated the, the German people, if it was written by uh, an enemy of Germany, if it was written by communists, or if it was liberal, or if it was written by a Jew. I mean, these were the guidelines for destroying books. Now, the first books that were burned were those of Karl Marx, and later on, they uh, sacked the Institute of, of Sex Research and destroyed about 20,000 books. Uh, they kept going to, this is the one, the one on May 10th, 1933, that most people cite, 25,000 volumes of un-German books were burned at the square. And 
this is this is just a more radical example of something that's already been happening throughout history, right? Or some of the books that were burnt, The Time Machine by H.G. Wells, The Communist Manifesto, Farewell to Arms, Hemingway, right? To Build a Fire by Jack London, which is not only ironic, but it's also good because this book sucks. Uh, so many different books were burned, and this is only a short list. I think Bambi is the one that hurts the most, considering that the mother also died because of a fire. So, moving on, the modern world and book burning. Not only are book burnings that happen in China uh, not as a cultural revolution, as a way of uh, controlling knowledge, but also in, in Sri Lanka, you have books and libraries that were burned down. About 95,000 books were destroyed in total. Uh, in more recent times, Harry Potter books have been, often been burned because of witchcraft, right? And obscure New Testament books have also been burned in Israel. You've got a uh, pastor down here in Florida, because that's where things happen in Florida, uh, who organized the burning of copies of the Quran on the anniversary of 9-11, which was later uh, rescinded as the, the president at the time said that it would not be a good idea. Well, not a good idea then or now or ever, really. But um, this, is, this one is interesting. The Pentagon buys and burns uh, over 9,000 copies of Operation Dark Heart because it contained classified information. I think this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to find information that is sensitive, then put it out there, then want the government to buy all of my books and then burn them. I think that's my plan. But take, for instance, the 2012 uh, small burning, organized burning of Fifty Shades of Grey, which I, I happen to think was a great idea. But either way, it still continues. You've got uh, manuscripts in other countries that are being destroyed, but these manuscripts are being destroyed primarily because, again, we don't value the culture. We don't value the people from where it comes. And the one I, I like the most, and to be fair, they didn't just burn one book, but students at Georgia S Southern University burned a book on white privilege by a Cuban-American author, uh, reportedly after the author visited. Some remarks were made. I, I like that example. I like that example because it is in stark contrast from the modern world to the very first example that we had where we not only destroy the book, but we destroy the people from where the books came. And I think that's where we are now. We're not in a place where we burn books anymore. Not really, not the way we used to, because we don't have to, right? The connection to Fahrenheit 451, as this video is a continuation of that lesson, we don't have to burn books anymore to destroy a culture, just let people not read anymore, and you know what? We're succeeding. We are not reading as often as we could or as we used to. And we don't need facts to tell us what we already know ourselves is true. We don't read as often as we do. For my own students, here are some of the things that they say. That in order to the control over the media and the dissemination of false information is really what is destroying the literacy of the modern world. In, in a world where we are the most literate people that have ever existed, we don't read. This is incredible. Institutions that have historically burned books or censored the content, they do it because they are, the books are unsafe for public consumption. But now we don't, we just do it to ourselves. We do it to each other. This is from my own students. That we censor certain words and ideas on platforms such as social media. This is another way in which we burn books. We avoid talking about things because they're controversial. We don't address issues. We ignore them instead, right? Because modern, does, modern, modern day censorship is, is, does not involve the burning of books. It's about controlling the media, controlling information and that dissemination of false information. So, as we get to the end, book burning, the face of book burning today is we don't have to burn anything. We are allowing our information to leak out of our heads and we are not filling ourselves with information. And the end of that eventually, right, will be the destruction of all information. So,